Hello everyone! Today is day 49 and for today, I'm actually gonna do the Fontaine Archon Quest Act 2. So I already finished Act 1 yesterday and okay, oh my god, I actually didn't expect that it was gonna take me 5 hours to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I really have no idea how long Act 2 is gonna be. I have no idea whatsoever. So in line with that, a friendly reminder to please do not share any spoilers, okay? No spoilers of any kind or else Nouvellet, the Chief Justice of Fontaine, will bonk you. <laughs> yes, also hey, it's Marion. Welcome to the stream. Hello. Okay, so... Alright, without further ado, I'm gonna go summon the quest log right now, just to see. Okay. Okay, so we're now in the start of Act 2. Like the fate moonlight of yesteryear, go to Hotel de Bord. Lenny has been acquitted, but you are not sure about what your next step should be. You decide to take up Navia's offer for a farewell meal to celebrate your cooperation. Okay, so let's go there now. Oh, wait! I <laughs> Shoot! I haven't claimed my expeditions. Okay. Oh, so actually, since we're in Fontaine, I might as well claim my expedition rewards here in the here in the Fontaine branch of the Adventurer's Guild. Yeah, so I already actually saw the Adventurer's Guild branch in this nation. And, and actually, it's really, really cute. And also, I really love the city layout so far. Like... As you can see here in this street alone, the alchemy, uh, the alchemy store is nearby as well as the, what do you call this again? <laughs> the pawn shop thingy. Okay, where is the? Okay, here. Here's the adventurers guild. See, almost everything is close by. I think um, I think the blacksmith is over here. Yeah, it's the only one that's isolated. Yeah. Astra okay, let me go claim. Actually, have I unlocked Fontaine stuff yet here? Oh. Okay, looks like I'll be staying. I'll be sticking to Monstead and Liu expeditions for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I wish the other nations gave ore to. Okay, official Bennett. Oh, yeah, actually, I came across some. Um, some different kinds of ore here in Fontaine. I'm not sure what they're gonna be used for. Maybe for the Fontaine uh, free weapons or something. Okay, Shenha, Chongye. There we go. All right. Okay, we can now proceed to the quest location. <laughs> so it should be here. Okay. I don't think I've been to the hotel. Let's go inside. Hmm. I came here several times with my father when I was little. But stopped eating here as often after growing up. I hope the food here will be to your taste. Oh, don't worry. We haven't eaten at a hotel like this in a while. <laughs> Paimon's getting excited already! Oh, in that case, I'll go order for us first. Please wait here a moment. Ooh, everything looks so good! People in Fontaine sure know how to enjoy life! Why, of course! Go ahead, try whatever you like. If the food's oh, good, wow. I'll make a group reservation for the rest of Spina di Rosula next time. I like this food in the middle. And if it's not? Well, uh... <laughs> then I'll still bring everyone. Albeit with only one dish per table. You, uh, Sure have your own way of doing things. Oh, we called this a farewell meal, but we could also treat it like a victory feast, right? We did just win that case after all. Yeah, actually, just a quick recap. A very, very quick recap. Um, we did win a court trial yesterday. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna say too much about it. 
<laughs> yeah. So for a reference, please check out the previous VOD. <laughs> it's certainly worth celebrating. Oh, true. Very true. In that case, boss, we'll have another two dishes. Huh? Paimon didn't mean that you had to order even more food. <laughs> Speaking of cases, do you think that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances will get caught soon now that this has all happened? Well, we've certainly taken a big step forward, but I feel that's about it. We know that there's an organization that means to dissolve these young women, but we still don't know what they are really after. If it hadn't happened right in front of us, Paimon wouldn't have ever believed that a person could be dissolved like that. <laughs> right? Yet it was because this was such a preposterous notion that the investigation could never really move forward before. Yeah, to be honest, I also can't pinpoint at the moment who this organization might be. Ugh. If only that guy could have finished speaking! We were so close to hearing who was behind it. In such investigations, even the smallest step can seem like a yawning chasm if the trail of clues is cut off. To be honest, I don't have high hopes for any follow-up that the authorities might conduct. It's not that I don't have faith in their ability, it's just that a different perspective is required in some matters. It's easy to guard against and deceive a single, narrow perspective. A shift in thinking is required at such times in order to produce a breakthrough, which is exactly why the Spina di Rosula exists. Those highfalutin folk are not all-knowing. That's why we exist. To seep into the cracks where filth <laughs> falls through. Where their watch fails them. That's the kind of problems we solve. Hmm. Seems Paimon thought things were simpler than they actually are. So they're kind of like an uh, independent organization almost. <sighs> it's alright. Well, <laughs> this was supposed to be a farewell meal. So I doubt you have further interest in this business, right? Let's talk about something else. Like, uh, what are your future plans? We wanted to ask the Hydra Archon for some information, but we haven't had much opportunity to do so. That's true. We didn't have a chance to speak to her after the trial ended. It didn't really seem like the right time or place to do it anyway. Yeah, especially since we did defeat her. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I see. So, your primary objective, which has been foiled so far was to have a chat with the Hydro Archon. I've heard that there's a long line of people waiting to meet Lady Farina. I suspect you'll be waiting for quite a while, considering that you missed your chance today. Yeah, we've heard that she's super popular here in Fontaine, and that it'll be tough getting any of her time. Hmm. Well, would you consider some more, uh, unique ways? Perhaps even methods of... Uh, let's say questionable. Questionable. <laughs> Guess that's Spina di Rosula's boss for you. Chock full of sketchy ideas. Well, what did you have in mind? Well, one way would be to infiltrate a performance troupe at the Opera House, only to abandon your act at the play's climax and ask to speak to her after mm. the performance. I'm sure Lady Farina would be eager to see the ending and would agree in order to finish watching the play, don't you think? Uh. Could you suggest something a little more practical? This plan seems pretty hard to pull off. We'd have to go learn how to act, and acting's really hard. <sighs> All right, here's another. Find a way to conceal yourself. Oh, no her way. <laughs> then wake her up in the dead of night and demand answers. <laughs> Don't let her go back to sleep until she answers all your questions. That's too extreme. I can personally testify that this one works. What? I'm sleepy? I'll do anything as long as I can finally get some sleep. Uh, that might work, but that's not really the problem. The problem is we don't want to get ourselves arrested. Ah, valid point. I overlooked that part. I was just thinking about leveraging a person's desire for sleep. How can you overlook something like that? <laughs> all right, all right, no more joking around. Huh, perhaps you could... Oh, I don't know. Cut the line when she's on a break. You did defeat her in court, clearing citizens of hers from false accusations. 
false accusation she had nearly upheld personally. I imagine that she feels quite ashamed about the whole thing. You mean that if we catch her while she's on a break, she might be too embarrassed to refuse? Oh, that does make some sense. Would someone with her personality really feel ashamed? Why don't we give it a try after this meal? You know, strike while the iron is hot and all. You know, for some reason, Osolars kind of reminds me of Fischl, but in a much more extreme <laughs> scale. <laughs> because well, we do know that um, sometimes when Fischl goes out of character, she suddenly becomes self-aware that um, like she goes, Oh shoot, I broke character! And then she becomes embarrassed for a second and then she tries her best to get back into character again. So, um, Purina had a lot of moments like that yesterday during the court trial like um she always tries her best to maintain this some um, very uh, very posh very arrogant very confident um um aura to her but then um once we once we had the upper hand in the court trial yesterday um there were a few moments wherein we could actually see uh, her inner emotions like she, we can actually we can actually see an after image of her that reflects her deeper her deeper thoughts her deeper thoughts of shame so yeah it's it's really it really reminds me official huh paimon did you drink my fanta uh was this your drink <laughs> sorry about that paimon wasn't really paying attention and the cup was right next to paimon would you like to order another no, it's fine. We're just about done here. All right. Honestly, Paimon wouldn't recommend Fanta anyway. It tastes kind of salty and icky. My drink also tasted that way too. Is that so? Huh. Well, in that case, we'll have to block Black the Fanta here then. <laughs> if we're all finished eating, then I'll go pay. Yeah, we're stuffed. Thanks for the treat, Navia. Good thing I ate already before this quest because if I didn't, <laughs> I would have gotten hungry there looking oh, at all the food. <laughs> so, so. Can barely float anymore. You could try walking, you know. Nah, that would be so normal. normal. <laughs> you know, like you. Hmm. Okay, as for expenses this month, we're left with. Hey, Navia! What are you doing over there? Oh, nothing, nothing. It was just a meal, you know? Nothing the Spina di Rosula can't cover. <laughs> that was a pretty pricey meal, all thanks to Paimo. <laughs> Let's get ready to try to meet the Hydro Archon again. Bye, Navia! <sighs> so this is goodbye, huh? Well, if you do encounter any other trouble in Fontaine, you're always welcome to contact the Spina di Rosula. I'll give your requests the highest priority. Uh, in any case, I wish you smooth sailing. I'll see you again, partner. See ya! There we go. <laughs> you know, we haven't actually met Chad for the second time yet here. <laughs> the last... The last time we saw Chad during the Fontaine Arcolin Quest was during Act 1 and... Um, yeah, we actually bumped into him in the street. So I really wonder if um, if we're gonna see him in the court trial real soon, because we actually in in the in the four point zero trailer, we did see a scene between Child and Nubilet in the court. Yes, I wonder if that's gonna be a different case altogether. Looks like that boat we took to Araneas might have been the last one. The shame. Oh. Hmm. Looks like we're back here again. Huh? Traveler? Are you hearing voices again? Yes, and it's clearer than it was during the day. So yeah, actually, um, uh, during the first time that the traveler, um, the traveler and Feynman went to this fountain, 
Actually, travelers heard this same voice too. Ugh. That's kind of spooky. Are you sure we don't want to come back in the morning? Vashe? Vashe? Hey, why are you still walking towards it? There might be something nasty in the water. I can feel strong emotions. Huh? Hang on. Paimon can kind of hear a voice. It's calling for Vashe, right? Hey, traveler, stop walking. Oh. Come on. Okay, so we're... Oh! It's an ocean Ed. Where's this? Vache, are you... My dear Vache? No, wait. You seem to be someone else. Do you know Vache? Do you know where my love is? I'm sorry, who are you? I'm... Wait. Who am I? I'm very sorry. I fear I do not know. My memories feel like they have been washed away like a ah. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. My memories feel like they have been washed away like a flood. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. I wonder if this is Fontaine's form of erosion. How much have I lost? How many things that I once held dear while on land? Have I since forgotten? You were once human? Yes. Oh. What I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. You lost her form. I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water. And then all grew dim. Light blue water, could that have been... Could she be one of the girls who were dissolved? I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure. Loved exploring places of peril. No matter where I went, Vache would go with me. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. Okay, so just a quick recap. So yesterday during the court trial, we found out that um, a lot of girls have been going missing for a very long time, and um, there, apparently there's been an there's been a very sinister operation going on wherein um, wherein the organ a very secret organization would um would kidnap girls for an experiment, and then what they would do is that they would test this so-called primordial water. So that um, they can find out if if the girls can dissolve into water. So yeah. <laughs> but now we can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. Also, this this dissolved water experiment thingy it only works on people from Fontaine. So you need me to find him. No. Our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no way for us to create any new memories. The thought of me gives him no sucker. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Vashe, tell him not to look oh. for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. I believe it will be hard for him to forget you. Perhaps that is so. As I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness, I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow, such longing. If only I could have comforted him, told him that I did not suffer. Indeed, I had felt a great warmth. That means Vache was a witness to the fact that you dissolved? Is that what you call it? Dissolving. If anything, I consider it a form of release. It was a state of neither fear nor frenzy, with only an endless peace, like the water still surface. 
I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time mm. and only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. It seems that after the body is dissolved, some measure of the consciousness still remains. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. Alright, I wonder how much time has passed in reality. Farewell then. I am glad that you were able to sense my presence. Remember, if you see Vache, tell him not to seek me out any longer. So yeah, I've actually been wondering too if um if the voice that Lenny heard at the at the court basement, I wonder if if that voice be also belongs to this oceanid right here, or maybe it's another different girl. Yeah, actually, actually, I forgot if it was mentioned. Oh! Oh, shoot! What the... Huh? What is going... Oh! Wait, did you claim more user? He's a Claymore user! Dear God, it's a whole army of Gardamex. Oh my God. Oh! Clorand! Clorand? Ah, uh, maybe the Gardamex went out of control or something. Oh! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm loving this. Whoa. Oh, she has a gun, right? Oh my god, I love her. <laughs> Wow! So they've been teaming up all this time. Or maybe j just for that moment. <laughs> I should thank you for lending us your sword there, Clorand. Alright, she's all a right, Geo! <laughs> Could you explain how you managed to show up here? Another Geo Claymore user. What is with what is with the Hoyaverse making Geo Claymore users? You already have, you already have Noel and Ito. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I followed you. It seemed to me that danger has followed you more closely as of late. Oh wow! I love her voice. I believe that following someone without their knowledge is actually called stalking. Is it not? Mr. Callus's last wish was for me to ensure your safety. Oh. And I will not betray his trust. He would do the same were he alive today. Do not speak of my father. Oh. Sorry, Demoiselle. I was not strong enough. This kind of reminds me of the Bronya and Siri situation in, in Star Rail. <laughs> but do keep an eye out for your manner of speech. I believe we all wish to avoid unnecessary emotional harm. Sorry, I did not consider your feelings. Whatever. What else do you know? How did you come to the conclusion that I'd be in grave danger? I doubt I know much more than you. But I believe that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances ah. is very powerful. Your performance tonight will almost certainly attract their attention. I'm sure they've known about me. To be honest, I'm shocked it's taken them this long to act against me. And what about these Gardamax? I thought only those associated with the Maison Guardianage could control them. None of these mecha have serial numbers. Oh. I was sure to check a moment ago. They are not the ones used by the authorities to enforce the law. I can only conclude that some powerful or wealthy party must have obtained them via illegal means. Deploying them as a private force of sorts. What? 
Your point being that they're out of Spina di Rosula's league, then? Yes. Be careful, and do not act rashly. I will continue investigating, no matter what. We will bring the truth to light. That's my father's true last wish. <laughs> Regardless, Actually, thank you we... for your help today, Clarand. <laughs> but if you get any ideas, tell me first. I don't much appreciate being followed. I do not think that they'll strike again anytime soon. So I shall stop following you. Good day, all. Right. I suppose that's the best news we've gotten today. Demoiselle, I believe that Miss Clorand was being sincere with you. If we tried, we could attempt to thaw relations a little. I know, I just... She's... <sighs> Who was that? A lot of time must have passed already if we got invaded in such a short period of time. <laughs> Thanks for the rescue, Navia. Oh, <laughs> come now. Forget all that polite talk. That wasn't really a farewell meal we had back there. Not for me, anyway. In truth, I hope that every meal we have together shall be a victory feast. As such, we're still partners. There's no need to thank me. It will take... 50 years for me to match Demoiselle's magnanimity. If it were me, I would have joined the Spina di Rosula on account of her goodwill long ago. <laughs> All right, you two. That's enough. Actually, Navia, how did you know that we were in danger? You sure did show up in the nick of time. Well, to be honest, you're the one who tipped us off, Paimon. Oh. Huh? Really? Paimon contributed to that? Oh, Paimon's even more amazing than she thought! Yes, all thanks to you grabbing my drink by mistake. Uh, how did that help? After we parted ways, I was on the way back to one of our bases when I suddenly thought of what you said. That the Fanta tasted kind of salty and icky. Wait, do you mean that? I thought it tasted strange as well, but I couldn't be sure. Fanta only comes in sweet flavors. So how could it have tasted salty? The color of the drink, if I recall, had also been a bit off. So the Fanta had been spiked with water from the Primordial Sea? Yes. Oh shoot, so that was so if close. if you hadn't drunk that cup for me... Spina di Rosula is preparing the grandest of awards for you as we speak for saving the boss. Huh. Really? Fortunately, Paimon, neither of us are from Fontaine. Otherwise, we would have been... I sent people to Hotel de Boer to investigate. But whoever did this left no trace at all. That's when I figured out that you might be in danger. You were just holding water. As quickly as I <laughs> so could. true. What? Why would they go after us too? All we did was defend Linny in court and help clear his name. Ugh, now we're caught up in this mess too, aren't we? Well... You did foil a plan that they were probably pretty proud of, and almost got their name in the process. Speaking of which, did anything strange happen when you drank the primordial seawater? Well, it can't be a coincidence that the Traveler fainted just now. She said that she heard that voice calling for Vashe again. Oh, and this time Paimon heard it too! But it was real faint. Does this situation have to do with the primordial seawater then? According to Lynette, the ability to hear voices like that has to do with one's sensitivity to the hydro element. Does that mean the primordial seawater raises someone's sensitivity to hydro when it's used on people who are not from Fontaine? That doesn't sound like too much of a bad thing, to be honest. Oh shoot, does this mean child drunk primordial seawater? Yeah, because um, child's hydro vision was, um, was acting very iffy. New intel? While you were out cold? Uh, well, let's hear it, shall we? 
Okay, the boys in the fountain belong to one of the missing women. A person named Basher was a witness when she dissolved. Oh, that is important. You tell everyone about what happened while you're connected to the Basher, ocean's consciousness. That name doesn't ring a bell. I suppose he hasn't stepped forward as a witness in court lately. Since he saw that young woman dissolve, he was at least at the crime scene. But he never gave testimony or any information regarding people dissolving in the primordial seawater. If he's still alive... Threatened? We should try searching for him. Yes, thank you. This is very important information indeed. We will continue to investigate. Alright, partner. Oh, you mean you'll help us investigate? Well, you did say that our farewell meal didn't really count. <laughs> that means we're still partners, right? <laughs> Jago Chad get this thing because of the bath water is actually pretty <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> that kinda reminds me of um actually I lurked for a little bit in Min Sleep's stream earlier and she also said something about the primordial water being bath water <laughs> Fontaine's bath water. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. And besides, we're in this now whether we like it or not. You're not gonna let those people who targeted us get off the hook so easily, are you, Traveler? Messing with us will cost them. This will prove to be their biggest mistake. Demoiselle, do try not to look quite so pleased. You are the face of Spina di Rosula, after all. <coughs> you talk too much. <sighs> well, in that case, let's head back to one of our bases, shall we? I'll arrange accommodations for you. We also have some plans to go over, and hopefully we can deepen our bonds as partners. But we'll take that one step at a time, I guess. Don't worry, you two. With us around, our base is definitely secure. Oh yeah, by the way, thank you for the lurk, Solomaya. Hey, Celeste, we'll lurk. <laughs> Enjoy Fontaine Argon Quest. Thank you so much! Okay, alright, let's go here. Actually, while I was playing off stream, I was already able to unlock um, <laughs> most of the waypoints. The only ones left here are some of the underwater ones. And oh my god, I actually... I, I had really high expectations for the underwater areas. And oh my god, the people were right actually. The, the underwater animations are so smooth. Actually, I think the first underwater area that I've been to was um was one of the one of the underwater ruins near the Court of Fontaine, and gosh, I really didn't expect that it's gonna be so easy to navigate my way through. Oh my god, Jaco, primordial residues reacting to primordial water would explain his unrest, right? Yeah, that could be the case, and another factor would be his um. We we do know that he got um he got the rest of his powers from the abyss, right? Especially when it comes to the foul legacy transformation. And yeah, actually Chad also speculated that maybe maybe that abyss thingy in him <laughs> could also be a factor in on why his hydro vision was also not working. So yeah, it it might have been uh, now that I think about it, it might have been uh, an even worse case for child. Oh my god. It's right up ahead. But let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch, Demoiselle. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus far. Huh. Very good. But let's not let our guard down for now. I shall find rooms for our respected guests. Thank you, Malus. Now, let's continue, Traveler. Go to the accommodations now we arranged. Gosh, I really hope that you'll have a hotel system soon. <laughs> you know, like in those... In some RPG games where we can... Wait a minute. Down the sewer? Yo! Oh! Oh my god!
This is so far down. Whoa. This is literally an underground operation. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is so far down. Yes, yeah, actually since Fontaine is on a is on a high uh, high part of the how do I say this? <laughs> the the Fontaine is actually higher than most um, most regions when it comes to their Oh my god. This is the other side of Fontaine. The wind rises. Wait. Do I have a waypoint here somewhere? Okay, I don't think... Okay. Oh! Okay, wait a minute. Let me see. There... Oh my god. Well, I'm really, I'm really glad that the, I think um, I didn't get the underground map layout for this part right here. Yeah, I haven't seen this actually while I was, um, while I was traveling off stream. Oh my god. Yeah, Fontaine's plate. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, we have a waypoint right here. Swan Fury upon the gale. Wait, Melus. Land of corroded shadows and tainted currents added to the archive. Oh, yeah, that kind of that kind of reminds me. Actually, my my memory for this um event is very uh, blurry right now. But during the ocean event back in one, I think it was one point four. So we did get this, we did get this little ocean companion, right? Okay, let me go get her. This one, <laughs> and Dora, and yeah, actually during the quest, um, as far as I remember, I think. I think some of the waters got contaminated and that was actually the reason why um Rodea who's the oceanid in Liwe she kind of got angry because of those contaminated waters so yeah everything is going haywire when it comes to contaminated waters oh my god I wasn't expecting Spina de Rosula to be located here, actually. Oh my god. Now I'm even more interested. <laughs> Wait, actually, okay. I love the logo right here. Okay, so actually there there have been a lot of instances in game wherein we saw some roses. So yeah, mostly in Mondstadt though. And it's actually I think this is the first time that we got to see uh, roses again, I think. The wind rises. Oh, there's a tavern here. Let's go. So, uh, this is your base? It's not quite what Paimon imagined. Your accommodations have been arranged. Under the present circumstances, I can confidently say it's the best we have. Thank you. <laughs> well, our funds have been a little tight lately. After all, we don't allow illegal or unethical profiteering. In fact, our funds often come from citizenry who support us. Seems like it's tough times for everyone. But if you have the support of the people, that does sound like it's worth it. <sighs> to be honest, our financial situation was a lot better back when my father was in charge a few years ago. <sighs> 
I'm afraid I'm not quite his equal. Your father... He was the previous boss of Spina di Rosula, right? How did he... Uh, Demoiselle, if you'll allow me to explain. Uh, no. I I'll explain it myself. I suppose I couldn't run from this topic forever. And as partners, this is something I hope they can understand. My father's name is Callus. Yes, the same one they call Callus the Unfaithful in the streets. Oh, the dramatic background music right here. <laughs> Three years ago, he was accused of murdering his own friend. But he chose a duel to defend his honor ah, instead right. of standing trial. He died in the duelist ring. Oh no. Oh yeah, so actually this got mentioned in Act 1. So um, actually... Actually, um, those who are accused in Fontaine, they do have an option to to undergo a duel in case they want to defend their honor. It's very optional though, and not many survive from it actually. So yeah, if they if they win the duel, they will not face trial anymore. But if they lose, they will face trial. However, since it um since they have a very they have a very uh, low um chance of success they're gonna die anyways it's just very very tragic but i do not believe my father was a murderer i'm sure he was set up at the time i believed that if he only stood trial and was duly investigated something amiss would crop up and prove his innocence but strangely he not only requested the duel himself but rumor has it that even after being seriously injured to the point where he could be deemed as having lost the duel. He refused mm. to surrender. Determined to die in the arena. <laughs> Three years later, I still don't understand why he did that. How could he protect his honor if he's dead? <laughs> if anything, he gave up his chance to defend himself. Do you have any clues as to why? The closest piece of info I have is that my father had been investigating the serial disappearances case at the time of his death. Ah, so that's why you're so determined to get to the bottom of that case. That's right. I've also tried to investigate the murder my father was implicated in, but I haven't found a single new clue in my countless reviews of the investigation records. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances, they must know something. I must know what really happened. Was my father coerced? Framed? Even if he really did kill his friend, I must get to the truth. <sighs> if only he'd been more open with me when he was still alive. He even hid the fact that my mother died due to complications oh. when giving birth to me. And now, here I am investigating his death. <laughs> you really are a handful, aren't you, Papa? Seeking the truth for the sake of your family. You know, we're quite alike in this regard. Demoiselle, please. If there is anything I can do, anything at all. I also will never believe that Master Callus murdered anyone. There are none whom I respect more than the two of you, Demoiselle. Master Callus did so much good in life, yet... All it took was one murder case for him to be dubbed Callus the Unfaithful. Even our supporters decreased greatly due to that incident, hence our uh, strained finances at present. Yeah, this is just my opinion, but oh my god, there, a lot of people in Fontaine are so easily swayed by what the court trials are showing them, even though, um, even though, um, the trial isn't even over yet so so yeah if we recall from the from the Lenny trial yesterday in Act 1 we can see that um the more that the more that the people are convinced towards um Farina's side the more the oratories favors Farina's side like I, I am okay. I I've actually mentioned how how iffy I was with Fontaine's justice system even during the 4.0 special program, and right now I I think it's even more iffy because um okay sure um 
um, the both sides are still presenting their witnesses and evidence in court, but at the same time, a large part of Fontaine's justice system is based on clout. Yeah, <laughs> it's based on clout, and um, it factors in people's emotions towards a trial. So it's it's really it's really very biased. Um. Okay. So I know that um. I know that Fontaine had put in measures to make sure that the trial will still be fair and just. Like for example, they still have a chief, they still have a chief of justice, and they still have um other than the chief of justice, maybe that they also have this oratrice machine that, uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like another judge so to speak it's kind of like their checks and balances however if you're using a very flawed a very flawed machine as your as your checks and balances that's gonna be a i don't think it's gonna be that reliable in the long run especially if it takes in people's emotions okay we do know that in court trials also um the the power of persuasion is re is very critical however um Okay. Oh my god, I am remembering my Ethos Pathos logo some um, lesson to over again. <laughs> okay, so okay. Just like I, I just learned this from my from one of my speech classes. Okay, so um basically pathos um pertains to using um, pertains to convincing people through emotions. Yes, it's kind it's kinda like that. And then, and then um, logos pertains to persuading people through logic, and then ethos pertains to persuading people through credibility. Yes, the the more credible you are, the more trustworthy you are. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind. I think um I think more people who are much more familiar with ethos, pathos, and logos would be would be able to say more stuff about this so yeah and actually when you're per when you're persuading people it okay i i just in my opinion i just think that there should be uh that we should be very careful on on how and when we use ethos pathos and logos because you can't for example for pathos which is convincing people through emotional appeal um I I do think that you cannot use this tactic all the time to convince people. Yeah, I I don't think so. So so that I I just think that something has to change with the Fontaine justice system because <laughs> but, but but okay okay. I I just <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's kind of that, that. Those are my thoughts in the moment, actually. So <laughs> we could go on about this topic. Actually, the more we go through this quest. <laughs> oh, I agree with that. Actually, bias like social media justice. It's kind of like um, trial by publicity. Trial by publicity. Uh, no, perhaps people just revel in that kind of drama. It's not something exclusive to people from Fontaine, really. Everyone's like that. People love watching the evil turn over a new leaf, but they also enjoy watching good people fall yeah. into the abyss for one slip up just as much. But how could. Ugh, never mind. If Callus was really falsely accused, we have to find the truth. He didn't deserve to have that happen to him. Uh, there is one other thing. Master Callus's opponent in the duel was. Oh, Ms. shoot! Oh, shoot! Okay. No wonder it was very awkward. Oh, no. Oh, her? Well, then, isn't that as good as saying that she was the one who killed him? No wonder the mood is a little strange between the two of you. Yeah. The sort of thing that you can just let go and move on from. Miss Clorand has always placed great emphasis on the honorable nature of the duel. 
If her opponent doesn't yield, she will not stop either. She knew Master Callus beforehand and greatly respected him, but seeing how he was resolute in the arena, there was only ever one choice she could have made. This kind of reminds me of the duel in Inazuma, actually. So we do know that um, in that during the Vision Hunt decree, um, Kazuha's friend died in a duel between uh, between Kazuha's friend and um, and um, Kujo Sara. It's not that I don't understand her at all, but I I just can't deal with this yet. Don't worry, Navia. Paimon knows how you feel. You don't have to force yourself to do that. Afterward, Ms. Koran told us that at the start of the duel, Master Callus requested that she ensure Demoiselle Navia's safety. And that indicates that he intended to die in that duel. Yes, that is our understanding as well. Yeah, I think he must... Maybe he might have done that as a... Maybe he, uh, he died on purpose to prove a point. Because um, if if we <laughs> if we make this into a parallel between him and Kazuha's friend all over again, um, we do know that of course Kazuha's friend, um, he is against the Vision Hunt decree and and um, okay I and he actually also wants to see uh, to see the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi technique up close. So I. Okay, yeah, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of that, actually. Oh, Papa, what madness drove you to ask the person who killed you to take care of me? And yeah, actually, I just remembered now, um, in, in Act 1 of the Archon Quest, I forgot who mentioned it, but, um, I th was it Lynette? I forgot. But basically, a, a character said that, um, that people who, that people, people who would rather die in a duel... Um, there, there are usually people who um who think that who think that their um their accusation that, that the accusation towards them is unjustified. All right. That they would rather way, die than go to the trial. That's the with you, even if it did sound like I was just complaining towards the end. I understand how important this is to you. Uh, thanks. You two should go and rest. This was quite a day after all. Yeah! I'm on feet! Please, relax and get some sleep. We will ensure you rest soundly. Okay, rest in your room! I see. I wanna take a look around first. Okay, silver! Whether it be responsibility for Spina di Rosula or Master Callus' death, it all landed on Demoiselle's shoulders so suddenly. This won't do. I must become stronger. I like this NPC so much. And also the the other the other old man here. <laughs> oh, we have a bar. Okay. I wanna see what we have here. Okay. Can you solve any problem? Theoretically, I do not believe there is any problem that can only be solved by force. When we of the Spina de Rosola act, I'm certain that we'll be able to, s to resolve your issue with minimal harm. From things as small as living supplies and household affairs, to matters as large as factional disputes and savings, the Spina will do all it can for you. Hmm. Too bad he doesn't sell anything at the moment. Yeah, I was checking to see if he had drinks or something. Oh my god. I'm so glad we have underground areas like this and as well as underground factions like this. Oh my god. Wait, do we have other waypoints here? Okay. I don't think we have at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna go rest in the room. A peaceful night passes under the Spina de Rosula's protection. Ah, Paimon slept so well. <sighs> this place feels almost too safe. Huh? Navia? 
Where did the other two go? I sent them back to Poisson. It's Spina de Rosula's place of origin, and where we have our headquarters. There's not much for them to do here at the moment. Oh, oh, oh yeah, actually I passed by Poisson a while ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's another underground area with a I think it looked like a shipwreck to me. I haven't been able to explore that extensively though. But yeah, it looks it's really cool. You're just trying to get them off your back. But never mind that. When did you get back? Were you waiting here the whole time? No, I just returned after going out for a while. I did some investigating yesterday regarding the name Vache. Wait, so you didn't sleep at all? <laughs> How could I after having such critical new evidence appear? Uh, guess Paimon wasn't <laughs> speaking for everyone just now, huh? Uh, unfortunately, this name seems to have been wiped from existence. It doesn't seem to have a match anywhere. I suspect that those behind this have already taken steps to hinder an investigation from this angle. But that does prove that this Vache person is a key witness in the incident. Does that mean we're too late, though? No. There is one ray of hope. One place in Fontaine that they would find almost impossible mm -hmm. to threaten, no matter how much they wanted to. And that is the archives kept by Chief oh. Justice Millionette. A place where detailed files on all the cases in recent years are kept. Are we breaking <laughs> in? <laughs> oh, Sionet you met is one of the young women who went missing recently. We should be able to find some related information there. So Nervalette maintains an archive of case files? Whew. Guess that's the hardworking Chief Justice for you. In that case, let's go talk to him, shall we? Um... Hmm? Aren't you coming along, Navia? Did you get tired? Uh, no, it's nothing. Uh-oh. Let's go see the Honorable Chief Justice. She felt sick for a second there. This is bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on to the next part of the quest. The truth also with the rain. Oh, I like this title. You're now involved in the serial disappearances of young women case, whether you like it or not. From the new intelligence you gain from your encounter at the Fountain of Lucene, you and Navia prepare for the next step in your investigation. Okay, I want to share my quick thoughts about this title right here. The truth, Lost with the Rain. So, um, no need to actually, explore. we do have two certain voice lines that pertain to both the rain and their impact on the investigation. So, okay, first of all, Relax. you can get Yelan. Okay, actually, let me see. Yelan. Alright. Okay, let's see. That would be here when it it's rains. Again? Oh, this isn't good. If the rain washes away the traces, it's gonna set us back a long way. So basically, the rain can conceal or wash away clues. Hazel also has something to say about this. Okay, where is Hazel? So yeah, actually both um, both Yelan and Hazel deal with intel quite a lot, especially since Yelan is is um is an intelligence officer, some kind of intelligence officer. And on the other hand, Hazel is a detective. So yes. Okay. Animo. Alright, here you go. Alright, let's go to voiceovers once again, check out the rain. Let's just hope the rain is There we go. <laughs> Also, I, I I do think that it's a really yeah, huge coincidence that um actually Yalan and um Yalan and Hazel were released at very uh, they were yeah they have they have very close release dates yeah because Yalan Yalan came out first and um I think it was was it version two point seven and then yeah version two point seven and then um. And then Hazel got released in 2.8. Yeah, and and actually, actually, that was a year ago. A year ago. So <laughs> I just find it so I just find it so amazing that oh, that um one that one year ago, one year before Fontaine got even released, we already had a bit of foreshadowing about about rain and and its ability to conceal clues 
Oh my god. I I really wonder if if this is even a coincidence or if was if or if it was intentional. Gosh. And yeah, they they also both have jazzy themes. Yes, the oh my god. Their resemblances are so out there. The is right up ahead. Come on. Okay. We're breaking in. Squall and Fury. I don't think I've been inside here. <laughs> I haven't checked this out yet. State your business here. <laughs> the Chief Justice is presently occupied with official matters. Huh. This place does look pretty heavily guarded. Guess that proves that Nervalet's files are really secure. Hey, don't you recognize us? Huh? Who are you? <laughs> Just to be clear, <clears throat> I don't care who you are or who you might be related to. Our rules make no exceptions. See? They've got great discipline, too. Yep, yep. I even can tell. I really find it interesting that there are a lot of melusines here. If you're here just to crack jokes, I can point you towards the exit. Unlike some, we're busy. So please leave if you don't have a reason to be here. Uh, no, no. <laughs> what I meant to say is, shouldn't you remember us from a few days ago? We were at the trial of the great magician Linny. Oh, oh, yes, I remember. I read about it in the Steambird. The Steambird. You, you must be Linny's attorneys. It's all coming back to me now. We're here today to report and archive some information on a follow up case. Huh. Is that even a thing? Of course. Don't worry. We're here on official business. You can trust us. All right, then, I'll let you through. The Chief Justice is just inside. Let's go. Uh, Thanks so much. Okay, where was this again? Ah, I didn't know this place can be. Uh, hmm. Okay, I think I'll go here more often. I like the ambiance here. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of Sumeru Academia's library all over again. Can I sit down here? Yes, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see. Chief Justice Office. Knock on door. Please come in. <gasps> no. Whoa! Oh. Okay. 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 Oh wow. I'm sorry. I have to take pictures. <laughs> Let's go! Oh, I'm gonna hang out here more often. Like, okay. I I I'm about to reveal to you that um actually okay, I I think um I think Sumeru Academia's library is still one of my favorite interior <laughs> interior. I think it still has one of the most beautiful interior designs, but but this one Oh my god, this comes close actually. So good. Oh my god, okay. This is so fancy. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't even expect that we're gonna see his office anytime soon. Wow. What typewriter? Um, sorry for our gym, Monsieur Nervalet. We only like to get in because we didn't know any other way. It's all right. Please let me know how I may be of assistance to you. Uh, so you're not mad at us? We are looking for a man called Vache. He may have been an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. If we can find him, we may be able to unearth some key information on the case. Ah, I see. In that case, please wait here a moment while I browse through the files. I really like his voice so much. Who knew that 
that Nevelette would be so easy to talk to. Yeah, he's so chill. I was expecting him to be so uptight, but no. It's been the opposite so far. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm quite certain that no one by the name of Vache has been involved in any case, criminal or civil, in the past several years. There are no records of him either in the files or in my memory. Guess that's that. Traveler, what if it was really just a dream? Maybe, maybe the Vache name got got erased for some reason or maybe he's using a different name altogether is that so all right then thank you so much monsieur neuvillette we'll take our leave now Ahem. i like Miss his design Nadia, so much i can understand how you feel your father callus was a truly exceptional man we deeply regret his passing. Hmm. And what are you trying to say, Monsieur Novillette? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just express some tendril of regret? No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. Oh. You only said those things because you felt like you should. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the oh. duel to go ahead. Oh. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. If you truly regret my father's death, oh. then why didn't you call a stop to the duel? Why didn't you give me the power to stop him from throwing his life away? Why did you just let him die, despised and hated by all? Is this the first time that we got a crying animation? Everything was hanging on a thread at that moment. Just the tiniest effort could have changed everything. There are still so many things I never got to tell him. So many questions he still owes me answers to. If you really have no heart, then just look me in the eyes. I, Navia, will show you the true meaning of regret. I'm sorry, Miss Navia. You and my father are truly alike. You keep all kinds of things in your heart and never say a word to anyone. You know, actually, I really do find Navia's and Nubilet's eyes really interesting. Because, because Navia has this sparkle in her eyes and then... It's not so much that you can't feel. But that you would never express anything. Oh well. In any case, everyone already knows full well the apathy of the Chief Justice. My apologies for taking my emotions out on you, Monsieur Chief Justice. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. And actually, it's so hard to tell what's going on in um in Nubilet's eyes. Okay, for some reason Nubilet's eyes look like dragon eyes. And I can't really tell the emotions in his eyes. <laughs> Navia, are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, rain. Oh. It's raining. You're right. Wasn't it still sunny when we went into the building? And there shouldn't be any active trials today. How strange. Now that I think of it, on the day my father was convicted of murder, it was also raining. Rain? What is it? Did you think of something? Your father's case, was he outside when he when it happened? Yeah, he was outside. It was uncovered and the rain could fall there. Why? Do you think the rain could have affected the crime scene? That thought has occurred to us before. 
We've even expanded the search area to try to account for that, but didn't find anything of value. But there was something you didn't know at the time. Oh? Wait. Uh, you don't mean... The fact that people can be turned into water. So you're saying that the true murderer could have been turned into water? And then got washed away with the rain? It's like what happened in the trial. Our only lead to this whole disappearances case got turned into water before we can even get answers out of him. Yeah, and if that's what had happened, then no one would have believed your dad, even if he explained what he saw to the authorities. I really think I found a true genius for a partner. <laughs> You're completely right. How did I not connect the dots earlier? All right, let's go to Poisson. With this new lead in mind, we'll get to the bottom of my father's case for sure. Yeah, we're gonna make progress for sure this time. Oh yeah, about about the rain. I I think I think um um Fremini mentioned to us that there's uh, there's this kind of myth in Fontaine about the rain, wherein um whenever it rains, it means that um it means that the Hydro Dragon is crying. So. Nubilet, are you crying? Are you are you the Hydra Dragon? Your your description is very sus. Your your character description a few days ago was very sus. <laughs> we should go while the while the idea is still fresh. Great. Let's go then. But what if um okay this is a very wild speculation but um but um if ever if ever Nuvalet turns out to be the Hydro Dragon Sovereign of Fontaine I wonder if he lost his ability to cry and the and is rain so is maybe that's the reason why he uses rain to signify that he's crying that is that that I will be so call? sad if that's the case. <laughs> also, Doctor, welcome to the stream. Okay, so this is Fozo. <laughs> I like the name. According to Nave, this should be uh, the main headquarters of Spina de Rosula. I really love the shipwreck design Whoa. here. Okay, so it's not a shipwreck. It's it's still a it's still a whole ship. <laughs> There's no need to be so surprised. While it may look like a ship, it's actually Spina di Rosula's headquarters. No wonder the logo had an anchor. My father was the one who asked for it to be built like this. Perhaps our taste in exterior design is the only thing we occasionally had in common. A gigantic and glamorous ship embodies discovery, opportunity, ambition, and conquest. It symbolizes Spina di Rosula's bright and limitless future. I think I'm starting to get why you like it. And Paima thought you were bluffing when you said Spina di Rosula had a glorious past. Paima was confused why a group with such a history would live in the sewers. But now that Paima has seen this ship for herself, she's been convinced. Well, Poisson is where Spina di Rosula began, after all. It's our main base, our home. Talk to Malus on the ship. Okay, here we go. Wow. Oh my god, that's a big fish over there. Quit following me. Is this okay? I don't think this is real. <laughs> oh my god, this is so big. Okay, I do have a... I have a Hydro Oculus. Okay, there we go. Wait. Can I... Can I... Oh yeah, I can dive underwater. You know, I'm still not used to Fontaine being... um <laughs> Being so conducive to underwater exploration. Like, um, there have been a few instances where um, whenever I see a pool of water in Fontaine, I would think, do I need to drain this? And then I would remember, oh yeah, I can dive this thing. Right. No more need 
We don't need to drain stuff anymore. Wow. Okay, I, I'm gonna take a quick detour for a moment. We... Whoa! 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 Oh my god. I haven't been here before. This is actually my first time actually exploring Pozo. I just unlocked the waypoint a while ago. But I haven't really... Uh, checked out stuff yet whoa enter oh we're going back <laughs> oh yeah that would be for another time <laughs> wow one thing is amazing oh my god wait let me enter here Gosh, I really love that the swimming animations are so smooth. Wow. I'm not sure how it is for other platforms, but for PC, to me at least, it's very smooth. Wow. I think Fontaine is my favorite region in terms of environment design. Behold. Wow. The wind rises. I love how a lot of the a lot of the areas in Fontaine look like something out of a fairy tale. It was already amazing to see all of them in the special program, but once you actually see them in game, they're even uh, much more majestic. Squad Fury. Huh. Okay, I have a Hydroculus somewhere, I think. Maybe? Is it over here? I'll find it somewhere, <laughs> maybe. Oh! Hello, Melus! Hello. We're back! Apologies for the wait, Demoiselle, and our most important partners. You said before that you still had some business at the court. What brings you back to Poisson so quickly? Uh, about that. It's because my partner here reminded me of something really important. You see, what if my father's case had something to do with water from the primordial sea? You still remember, right, Belus? On that night, it was raining? Yes, the case was quite similar to that of Mr. Linney's. Both were what you'd call impossible murders. Okay, actually, I just remember something now. So, so yeah, we do know that the primordial waters can deserve people who are from Fontaine. But, but... Um, I'm really wondering if, um, if, if, um, if there are any uh, further effects for, for men from Fontaine? Because, okay, we do know that, um, in, um, with the case of the missing women, we, we saw, we got to see one girl who turned into an ocean aid. We spoke to her earlier, and, um, it actually makes me wonder if, um, if if the organization who was beside who was behind the missing disappearances i wonder if they were trying i wonder if the reason why they're kidnapping um girls specifically i wonder if they're trying to test if if they will if the girls will turn into oceanids because so far um all the all the oceanids are female and then when it comes to the when it comes to the men we haven't seen anything at all we just so far we just heard of men dissolving into water but other than that we don't know anything so yeah that would be a really interesting question to think about could the mastermind be the same person could you tell us a bit more about what happened before yeah of course many years ago something called synth began to gain popularity in poisson 
at a glance. It was a kind of drink that could excite your mood and produce many pleasant hallucinations. Wait! Didn't that guard guy who turned into water also mention that the primordial water could mm. be used to produce some kind of potion? Yes, he did. Considering what we know now, it's almost certain that synth is created using water from the primordial sea. If you drink synth for an extended amount of time, you'll suffer many side effects, such as losing the ability to focus or control your emotions. And if you were to stop drinking it completely, you'll experience flashes of paranoia ah. and anxiety while lacking energy to do anything. It's an extremely dangerous substance. As he oversaw Poisson, my father was compelled to put a stop to synth abuse and called for a complete ban of it. Boss's uncompromising attitude incurred the synth vendor's wrath, but no matter oh. how much they threatened or bribed him, he refused to yield. Not only that, Boss became determined to find the mastermind behind the synth operation and put an end to the problem once and for all. And this has been going on for quite a long time. Yes, but the enemy was very cunning. <laughs> So he could never get anything out of the dealers. All of whom only sold the stuff and weren't privy to the rest of the operation. Recognizing that, my father decided to contact the dealers in secret and cultivate personal relationships with them. Finally, he was able to convince someone to become his informant. The man's name was Jacques. He felt greatly ashamed about oh. his work after seeing many families destroyed by synth abuse. That night, my father hosted a banquet at his countryside estate. He planned to meet up and exchange information with Jacques over some food. But then, we heard two gunshots from the courtyard. Oh, shoot. We raced to the scene and found my father, still holding a gun. And Jacques, who was already dead on the ground. Huh? How did that happen? Aren't they on the same side? Sounds just like Lenny's case, doesn't it? In both cases... The culprit seemed obvious, but neither appeared to have any motive at all. Looking back on it, though, I now believe the most important clue was something we all overlooked at the time. There were pieces of clothing left at the scene. So they could have belonged to someone who got dissolved. Precisely. It's all thanks to you that I made the connection now. Back then, we all just thought they were some costumes that Jacques used to disguise himself at the banquet. But, considering it now... It's almost certain that they belong to a third person at the scene. With one extra person, we'll also need to reconsider why the two shots were fired. Maybe your father got into an argument with Jax, but it's also possible that the, per that the third person was to blame. You're right. We still don't know what happened. But my intuition tells me that we're on the right track to figuring it all out. <sighs> I'm finally headed towards the truth. Jacques was an empathetic man who was infinitely remorseful for his past actions. It's unlikely that he turned on boss with zero warning. I think this third person is probably the key to the full truth. On that note, however, even though this will not please you, demoiselle, as you're and your father's butler, I must still offer a word of warning. I knew he was a butler. <laughs> Our opponent is insidious and cruel. Mm -hmm. They are extremely difficult to deal with, and Boss has already lost his life trying to bring them to justice. Even though Spina de Rosula has lost most of its former glory, Poisson has welcomed a new time of peace, and we have been allowed to live out our lives. There is no need to follow your father's path. It would be both wise and in line with Boss's wishes to step back and give up on the case. If that's indeed what he wished for, then he should have told me that himself. You know, okay, this is just a very wild speculation, but... Um, I wonder if, if the one who's behind this operation... I wonder if it's the Fatui. However, okay, maybe maybe the contrasting uh, the co I think the rebuttal for this would be um, but um, but Lena said that um, that the house of the hurt are trying to save 
to save Fontaine from this from this crisis. Because um because when um actually he did mention that Arlequino, who's the he- who's um who's in charge of the House of the Hurt orphanage, she's actually from Fontaine also. So um I I am I am really trying to wonder if um if the Fatui were behind this this dissolving water operation all along and what if what if they're trying what if they're also trying to become to become the heroes of this of this operation like like imagine um imagine being the one behind behind a very sinister operation only to only to pretend that you're also the savior of the crisis that's a that's a very that's a very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 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 could yeah, that's just a, a speculation for now. That could be a possibility actually. Like she's gonna she's gonna maybe Arlequina's gonna gonna pretend to be a hero. <laughs> so that um so that so that um Fontaine will be indebted to the Fatui. Okay, that's that's Is just that a theory. Person to him? <laughs> and yet I was the one most kept in the dark. What was the point of him dying without sharing any of the secrets he knew? Did he manage to protect anything in the end? Synth is still here. Callus the Unfaithful is still his epithet. And Spina di Rosula is barely getting by. Nothing has changed. Did he think I'd just accept his meaningless death and live out my life just as meaninglessly? I've never accepted that. Ever. Not since that day, and certainly not now. I want to find out the real answer for everyone's sake. For the missing girls, for the victims, and for myself. Navia. This is indeed the best moment to act. Your partner appears to be quite reliable, and more importantly, Demoiselle, I think you're also ready to take this on. So you do know something else, Malus. Oh. Yes, I do. In fact, even before that banquet, Moss oh. already knew of the connection between Synth and the serial disappearances case. But what drove all the tensions to the boiling point was the revelation that you, Demoiselle, had been selected ah. as the next target to disappear. What? Boss also didn't tell you that he had been diagnosed with a rare illness. The doctors told him that he had no more than five years left to live. And the serial disappearances case caused him great anxiety. Five years was nowhere near enough time to resolve this long-standing conflict. But once he passed away, all the danger would pass on to you. Knowing all of this, he decided to use one final intimidation tactic before his death. He claimed to have already gotten his hands on some key incriminating evidence for the other side, and even told mm-hmm. some members of Spina de Rosula about the details. But as long as you remain safe, he would not share the evidence with the public. If something were to happen to you, then he and all those he told would immediately expose all they knew about Synth and the disappearance. Okay, that was kind of clever, actually. Right. So nobody would be able to get off scot-free. As we've seen, Boss's tactic has worked. Even though Boss has been gone for a long time, the other side has not tried to take Demoiselle's life. Except for the incident at the hotel earlier. No. I don't believe it. He never appeared to look sick to me. No father wants their daughter to see them weak and haggard. Especially someone as proud as Boss. To him, dying in a duel and suffering lasting dishonor as the unfaithful are still far preferable than losing face in front of his daughter. (laughs) So he chose to die in silence so that he could protect me. I'm afraid you're not understanding this correctly, Demoiselle. What Boss wanted to hand to you was not a parasol, ah. but a sword. If Boss's spirit could hear you telling me that you want to find the answer for the sake of everyone involved, 
I'm sure he'd be extremely proud. Uh, that fool. <laughs> Couldn't he have just given it to me straight? No. He might have set up everything precisely because he never thought I'd be able to understand him. Is that the amount of confidence he had in me? And what if I was never able to make it to where I am now? He gave you the choice to live how you want. Yeah. I suppose that's true. With the way he'd set things up, if I had wanted, I could have just lived out my life without a care in the world. But thankfully, he rarely talked to me about complex matters, and thus understood little of me as a person. In this case, he really didn't need to give me an easy way out. <laughs> Malus, what was the key evidence that he shared with you? It's the location where Synth is produced. Oh. Essentially, it's the enemy's headquarters. When he was threatening the enemy, Boss didn't share the specifics of the incriminating evidence he found. But if you want to use it against the enemy, you'll still have to take several things into consideration. Why? If we know where the place is, can't we just go storming in? You mustn't forget that we're fighting against a mysterious and dangerous organization that's been in operation for decades. There's no telling what might be lying in wait at their headquarters. We also have no idea what kind of evidence we may be able to find inside, nor what people we may be able to capture. But a single visit to their headquarters would be tantamount mm -hmm. to a formal declaration of war. That's so sad. I was ready to break in. <laughs> the worst case would be that we leave empty-handed, but also open ourselves up to full retaliation. Then, in that case, why not work with the Fontaine authorities? Well, you saw one of them dissolve during Mr. Linney's case. We have no idea just how thoroughly they may have been infiltrated. Huh. That's true. Seems my father really had no choice. But things are different now. It should be a lot easier to prove the other side's guilt now that we've connected Synth with the disappearances case. You sound like you've put a lot of thought into this, Malouse. I am the butler, after all. I live but to serve the boss and Demoiselle's will. I've always been willing to take on any kind of risk for your sake. But considering my relative lack of ability, I've spent my time keeping secrets, performing basic investigations, and waiting for the right time to come. Thank you for all of that, Malus. Have you discovered anything new in the past few years? Let me think. One conclusion I came to was that the enemy must be quite familiar with Spina de Rosula. Yeah. Or at least have an informant planted here. When I announced orders to the organization's members on Demoiselle's behalf, I used to deliberately keep a few people in the dark mm -hmm. and observe the reactions of the synth vendors. If the vendors didn't change their plans, then the individuals informed of our orders must be innocent. If the vendors packed up and fled, however, then someone must have given them the news. After several rounds of testing and investigative tracing, I've narrowed the suspect list down to three people. Damn, Melis is so reliable. <laughs> first is Florent, Spina de Rosula's senior advisor. Huh? Florent? Yes, yeah, surprising, isn't it? He was one of the people Boss trusted the most. Which also means that he was someone who understood Boss really well. Thanks to his position within Boss's innermost circle, he always knew our upcoming plans and could thus avoid capture this whole time. <laughs> There's someone else like him too. Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere. Uncle Marcel. What is this Confrérie? It's a guild in Poisson. The boss helped it to grow to its current size and prominence. In the beginning, they were only reselling some daily goods, but now they're one of the richest guilds around with a lot of business connections in the city. So, they're like a sister organization of Spina di Rosula? Yes, you can say that. When we were fighting against the synth dealers, they provided us with plenty of support. 
It's a bit difficult to imagine someone using their own money to hunt down themselves. Yeah, that is kind of complicated. <laughs> the final suspect is Thierry, the man responsible for coordinating information between Spina oh. Dirisola and the guards. Although the guards mostly leave us to our own devices, there are still many activities we have to report to the local authorities. Since Thierry is always in the know about our current activities, he could theoretically always plan one step ahead. I see. These are all people who I communicate with quite regularly. To think that the enemy we've been fighting against has been right next to me all along, among those I trust the most. It's almost too hard to believe. If you want to investigate them, please take every precaution to not alert the quarry. Judging from our experience, the enemy is extremely cautious. Mm, of course. And thank you, Malus. You've provided us with a lot of great information. You're too kind, my lady. I'm just doing my duty. And before I forget, proving Boss's innocence would also mean clearing him of blame in Jacques' death. After that incident, Jacques' wife and daughter were taken into the Spina's care. Oh! They still live in Poisson today. I want to see them. If it might help, you could also pay them a visit. I can make the necessary arrangements. Oh, thank you so much, Melus. You really are the best. A new case awaits, my dear partner. Leave it to me. I hope we can work together to uncover the truth and end this case once and for all. Oh, we're gonna get this kind of book too. Okay, let's go. Callus's case record. Three years ago, on a rainy night, banquet goers heard two gunshots outside the house. When they reached the scene, Callus had a gun in his hands and Jax had been shot and slain. Based on the investigations done then, there was no possibility that anyone else could have done the deed and escaped. And Callas was thus a judge to have been the culprit. Oh, let's go! Okay. Alright. Um, I, I do have a few thoughts about the butler though. Um, actually, coincidentally, I did watch a, a movie. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it was two weeks ago or something. Yeah, it was very random. I forgot the title, but um, basically, this whole um, this butler NPC here in this quest, he kinda reminded me of a certain butler character from the movie I watched, and um, actually, the butler in the movie was was actually a keeper of secrets. Like even though he he knew a lot about his um owners dealings he um he never revealed such such secrets so so yeah in line with this quest it kind of amazed me that um that melus was able to to withheld information for such a long time and and yeah i i am also amazed that he revealed this key information now that he saw that um that that navia was ready to to take on the case of her father so yeah <laughs> okay all right let's get we're gonna start investigating now visit jack's family the wind rises wow i actually thought that we're gonna be limited to one case like i thought that the lini trial will, will be our only case for fontaine but it turns out we have more we have a second case now <laughs> I really love the investigation structure that they did for this. Please excuse me and enjoy your conversation at your leisure. Thank you for arranging everything for us, Malus. Excuse me, miss. Do you need anything from us? Mm. Oh. Hey, Navia's all quiet. This isn't like her at all. Let's not bother her for now. I'm sorry. That I only came to visit after all this time. <sighs> after what happened, I didn't know how I was supposed to face the two of you. Ah, if it's about that, there's no need to apologize. After my husband died, Spina di Rasula sent us a lot of Mora and support. I understood your guilt and apology to be genuine. But 
Aren't all of those things nothing compared to the loss of Jacques? <sighs> I can understand the kind of pain that comes with losing a father so needlessly. You don't understand at all. I didn't know how to face you. Because I didn't know what I could possibly bring as a consolation gift. I know only the full truth could bring closure to you. And to all of us. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I appreciate the sentiment, but you don't have to carry all that guilt. On the matter regarding my husband, my daughter and I have more or less found our answer already. Would you mind sharing it with me? I really can't believe that my father could ever bring himself to shoot Jacques. I always knew that my husband's money was earned through others' suffering. Oh. He told me countless times that if he could turn back the clock, he would never go oh. into the business again. Oh. He had many regrets and felt that he took the idea of providing for his family too literally. For the longest time, he thought Mora was everything. So when Mr. Callis came to him with a proposal, he accepted it almost immediately. He tried to be as careful as he could, but even so, he was still found out by the higher-ups. They found out about his betrayal? Papa didn't say that exactly. But Papa did tell me that I should never be ungrateful. Before he left that day, he told me that he had no choice. It was only later that I realized it was his final farewell to the two of us. Wait, does that mean someone ordered Jax to take out Kala? I don't know that for sure. But you could say that's the conclusion I eventually came to. Which is why I'm the one who should feel guilty. Callus had always taken great care of us, both when he was still alive and after he passed away. Even if he fired the shot that killed my husband, it was likely in self-defense. It is impossible for me to hate him for what he had done. Interesting. But Mama, why is Papa still the bad guy if he did the right thing? Papa always wanted to be a good man, so why did he have to do a bad thing in the end? Well, things aren't always as they seem. You still feel like your Papa was a good man, right? Yeah, Papa was a really good man. The best in the whole world. Then you should hold on to that. If a good man had to do a bad thing, then he must have had his reasons. Regardless of whether he left you a parasol or a sword, he must have done so to give you a better life. Oh. Thank you for everything you've told me. I will definitely find the truth. The current state of things is not something I'm willing to just sit back and accept. Thank you. I'm very grateful to hear this from you. This quest got a lot more interesting. <laughs> Even though your personality is quite different from your father's, your Aww. determination when you speak is really similar. You really think so? That's the first time anyone said that to me. Testimony from Jack's family. Jack's family believes that he had struggled greatly with the order to kill Kalas. Did Kalas act in self-defense? Or was there more to the incident? Okay, I want to talk to them for a bit. I'll leave my husband's case to you. <sighs> Thank you, Miss Spina, and Miss Spina's friend. Okay, we're now gonna talk to one of the suspects, it seems. Okay, here you go. We gotta be careful for this one, I think. Are you okay, Navia? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry. Let's investigate the three suspects next. Laurent should be nearby. And we should be able to find Thierry and Uncle Marcel in the city. I'll get it myself together on the way. So please don't worry. Alright, here we go, suspect number one. <laughs> Greetings, boss. How may I be of assistance today? I'm sure you've heard about what happened at the Opera House. 
Someone got turned into water right in front of us. Yeah, I've heard. With something that dramatic, I'm sure journalists will milk it for all it's worth. And it'll be all the talk for the next several weeks. It also reminded me, on the day that the incident happened with my father, it was raining outside, and we found some clothes left at the scene. After my partner here put the dots together for me, I feel like we should try to reopen his case. Can you do me a favor and try to recall what happened that night? Hmm, let me think. Mr. Callus was feeling pretty upbeat that day. So hmm. he was drinking and bantering away with us at the table. After that, he told us that he wanted to go get some fresh air. So we let him go without thinking much of it. Who knew that we would hear two gunshots ring out right after? Hmm. My first reaction was that Mr. Callus's life was in danger. So I grabbed my holster and made a mad dash toward the scene. But when I got there, it was already too late. Mr. Callus was standing over a dead body with a gun in his hands. All we could do was look back and forth at each other, not knowing what to say. So you also remember two gunshots then? Indeed. The guards said that the first shot didn't hit anyone, while the second killed Jacques. But I've never really bought that explanation. Mm. Reason being, Mr. Callus had left his gun on the table. I even made sure to confirm that before running to the scene. But according to the guards, that doesn't mean he couldn't have had other guns on his person. Okay. About the clothes left at the scene that you mentioned. Do you think there was a third person there who was turned into water? It's very possible. At least from our perspective, my father had no reason to kill. So he would also have no reason to bring an extra gun with him. The gun he was holding probably belonged to Jacques or a third person on the scene. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying Mr. Callus ended up with the gun because he seized it from one of the other guys? But hold on. If that's what had happened, then why didn't he share the truth with any of us? He didn't even want to face the Oratrice machine and chose instead to prove his honor in a duel. Did he lose all faith in the courts after seeing oh. someone dissolve right in front of his eyes? Yeah, that's, this could be a possibility. Yeah. Mm, about that, Malus told me a thing or two. So, I think I can understand why he committed to the duel. I'll tell you everything once the whole truth has been revealed. I understand. Then I'll leave Mr. Callus's honor in your hands, boss. Wait. And if I may just say one more thing the whole Callus the Unfaithful epithet has been a thorn in my side since the day it was invented. Many people have laughed at me for still calling him Mr. Callus, even after so many years have passed. But it was Mr. Callus's trust that allowed me to rise through the ranks of Spina di Rasula and live the life I lead today. No matter what others might say, he'll always be the man I respect the most. And he'll always be my boss. Don't worry. I will definitely find the truth. You and all our other comrades at the Spina deserve to know the truth as well. Okay. Um, before I read this, um, I would just like to share my thoughts about something. Okay, so um um back when Lenny tried to investigate the aura trace during the trial I during the during the magic show. So he went to the to the basement, right? And then um he actually heard a voice speak to him. And okay, actually now that I think about it, that makes me wonder, what if the aura trace machine is using this dissolved oh my god <laughs> this sounds so wrong but what if what if the machine is using the dissolved water oh, or all the oh my god wait oh shoot that is <laughs> oh my god okay that's <laughs> oh please don't let it be the people who got dissolved oh no but it's possible though. It's possible that they're using using the people who got dissolved into water. Because actually 
Because no Lily has been wondering why it's um why the machine can deliver court sentences accurately. So yeah, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> now I don't want to think about it anymore. Okay, anyway, information regarding Florent. Florent, the advisor to the Spina di Rosula, claimed that he was very grateful to Gallus for his kindness. He was also present at the banquet on the day of the case and can provide evidence that Callas did not carry a gun with him when he went out. My apologies, boss, for that last little <laughs> bit. It's just... Many years have passed while I've held my tongue. It's not often that I get to share my true feelings with others. Okay. That was an interesting piece of intel. Okay, on to suspect number two. Wait, is he... Okay, he's above ground, I think. Alright, teleport to the court. I'm gonna be so mad if it turns out... If it turns out that the machine is using... Dissolved people. I'm gonna be so mad. Like, the way I... I, I was already mad when, um... When the Sumeru... When the Sumeru Academia harvested people's dreams without their consent for their for their um for their god project so <laughs> hey Thierry it's me <laughs> oh now what brings you here Miss Navia I've heard that you made quite the name for yourself at the opera house oh so you've got news of that already oh okay Hey, I'm also a member of the guards, you know. The way you make it sound, people would think I was sent off to Poisson because I had done something wrong. Are you sure there isn't a little bit of truth in that? Under normal circumstances, shouldn't you have been called back to the city already? <laughs> I mean, where I work is really up to me. Let's just say I enjoy the ambiance of Poisson. Callus did a fantastic job running the town, building Spina di Rasula from the ground up and clearing many obstructions in my way. Yeah, how long has, be has he been working for Spina though? It would be next to impossible for me to find a similarly easy but high paying job in the city. Mm. <sighs> anyway, enough chit chat. Are, are these two friends of yours? You uh, here for some formal business? Ah uh, yes, these two are my partners. What happened at the Opera House made us realize that Linny's case, and my father's, may be related. We're trying to reinvestigate the details of my father's old case. Ah, I get it. You think there might be more to the case now that we know people can be dissolved into water, right? I was also flabbergasted when I first heard of it. If you want to go through the original files from your father's case, I can help you look for them. That'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have another question. Do you have the authority to dispatch Gardamex? Of course. Without them, I couldn't possibly handle Poisson on my own. Mm. Why do you ask? We definitely can't use them to forcefully get more evidence for your father's case. Well, you see, just recently, we were attacked by a horde of unnumbered Gardamex in the city. So... <laughs> if you, hypothetically, wanted to do something against me, all you would need to do was get rid of the Mecha serial numbers and uh... send them after me. <laughs> then you think too highly of my abilities. Dispatching Mecha is very different from controlling them. If I had to make an analogy, when you order a dish, the chef will make it for you. You can ask the chef to cook, but uh. <laughs> to massage your shoulders or carry your baggage. If you try to make unreasonable demands, the chef would just think you're out of your mind and ignore you completely. The same goes for me and my Gardamex. Removing a serial number is also not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of complex steps to it, and it's almost impossible to keep it a secret. Mm. So I can promise you... Those mecha were definitely private units. They're certainly not cheap. So, whoever their owner is must be super rich, powerful, or both. Now that you mention it, though, being in the synth business would definitely be profitable enough to afford this. 
Makes sense. Oh. <laughs> then you're officially in the clear, Thierry. <laughs> oh, thank you for the vote of confidence, Navia. Jokes aside, I'd like to wish you all the best with your investigation. I'll be staying in the city for a little while, so just come find me if you need any support from the guards. Okay, that was so interesting. Information regarding Thierry. Thierry is the person responsible for official contact between the Spina de Rusula and the guards. According to him, only the sufficiently rich can privately own large numbers of guard emits. I'll see what I can do for you and Spina de Rusula when it comes to guard stuff, but don't go advertising it to everyone else. <laughs> Okay, alright, we're now on to suspect. <laughs> suspect number three. <laughs> okay. Is he a... Maybe I should go somewhere. What's the closest place? Hmm. I'll try to teleport here for the meantime. Let's see if he, if he's in the train station or something. Aquaba station! Aquaba station! <laughs> Not train station. Oh, never mind. Squall and Fury! You know, it's really nice traveling Fontaine when you're using Scaramouche. I know I have been advertising him as a boat of transport, but it's true. <laughs> it's so nice to just float around here. Hello, how may I help you? I'm here to see Marcel. Could you please let him know? You can just say Navia's looking for him. Sure. I will let him know right away. Okay, so this is the other guild. After waiting for a while, Marcel arrives in a hurry. Ah, Navia, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not as young as I used to be, so my legs are giving out a bit. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Marcel. There's no need to stress. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what happened in the Opera House. I'm sure you saw everything too, right? Yes, uh, I've never seen anything so strange. Oh, you were at the Opera House too? That's right. I went there with Navia to see the magic show. Who knew it would turn into a whole murder mystery? I also witnessed your marvelous sleuthing work. Quite impressive. To beat the Hydro Archon at her own game on her <laughs> own turf, I can already imagine everyone in Fontaine discussing your exploits over a few glasses of wine. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to become the talk of drunkards. <laughs> Apologies. It's just how Fontaine is as a nation. Yeah. Everyone loves drama and theatrics. Drama and theatrics, so true. Uncle Marcel, you've also noticed that other thing, right? The fact that humans can dissolve in water? Yes. I was reminded of your father's case right away. Is that what you're investigating now? Exactly. I still don't have much solid proof, but I can sense that the other side has already begun to act. Oh, and what makes you say that? We were attacked on Araneus by some unnumbered Gardamax. And there was also an attempt to get me to drink water from the Primordial Sea. If not for the vigilance of my partner, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Oh, you're giving us too much credit. Wasn't it you who protected us? Alas. It seems things are heating up again. The peace that Callus sought so dearly will soon become a thing of the past. But rest assured, Navia, Poisson will always remain a safe haven for you. If you're scared, you can always return there. If anyone dares to lay their hands on you there, the Confrérie of Cabriere will use its funds to the last Mora to bring them to justice. Thank you, Uncle Marcel. But I don't intend to go into hiding. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Do you have any new thoughts on my father's case? Ah, <sighs> about that. Sorry. I okay, I think this guy him. is sus. So it'll take me a while to recall my memory. Sus! The Confrérie was responsible for that banquet. So I was out and about the whole time, making sure things were running smoothly. I didn't even have the time to drink with the guests. Okay, the coffee was responsible for that banquet, so I was out and about the whole time making sure things were running smoothly. Then I heard the sound of a gunshot, and the rest was history. Because if you're if you're if you can organize an event, then 
Oh, it's okay. No need to push yourself. We'll ask around some more. See if there are any valuable clues elsewhere. Sounds good. Just let me know if you ever need Mora. All my wealth comes from Callus's patronage and support. I'll spend however much it takes to clear his name. Information regarding Marcel. Marcel is the leader of the Confrere of Cabre and was the organizer of the banquet years prior. The Confrere and the Espina have always maintained a close working relationship, though his recollection of the event Though his recollection of the events of the case is quite foggy, he is willing to defend Navia. Sus. <laughs> ah, alas. Like, these kinds of things happen to the kindest people. Like, even, even the old butler can remember a lot of stuff. Why can't you? <laughs> okay. I mean, I know. I know that foggy memory is a sign of old age. However, I still think that the man is sus. Okay. Go over the cousin, Navia. Let's go. Where is she? Okay. We're gonna fly up there. We've talked to all three suspects. Purely based on their conversations with me. None of them sounded particularly suspicious. Yeah, none of them really stood out as a suspect. I disagree though. I suppose that's to be expected, though. If a single conversation's all that's needed to find them out, then my father wouldn't have needed to investigate the case for so many years. Anyway, even though we didn't make a breakthrough, let's still compile what we were able to find. Hmm. But where should we start? Jack's motive. Ah, you're right! Flora mentioned that Callus probably only ended up with the gun because of circumstance. Hmm. That makes sense. According to Jacques' family members, he already told them that he had been discovered and that he had no choice before he left home that day. Hmm. If I had to guess, he probably received an order from the synth boss to kill my father. Had he refused, he and his family's lives would have been forfeit. So, Jacques fired the first shot? If I was Jacques, I wouldn't have fired the shot at all. Oh? And why is that? Could he guarantee his safety after killing Callus? Could he guarantee his family's safety? Ah. Uh... Mm -mm. I will go with this one. Could he guarantee his family's safety after killing Callus? Oh, that's a good point. Jack probably already knew that he was just being used as a tool for murder. And once he had completed his mission, he'd be of no more use to his boss. Huh. So, what would make more sense from his perspective would be to turn his back on the Order... Yeah. ...and seek protection from my father. Seems the third person was the one who derailed everything. <laughs> Makes sense. But without evidence, that's still just a theory. Besides Jacques, the attack from the Gardamex has been bothering me quite a bit as well. It's obvious that our enemy has become more antsy after the secret of the primordial seawater was revealed. Do you think he knew, even then, that we'd follow this lead to the end? Given everything that's happened since, uh, it's quite possible. But who among the three suspects would have the ability to control privately owned Gardamex? Yeah, it's a very... <laughs> Tier, if you're talking you about the Gardamax huh. situation. It is possible that he's figured out a way to convert the Gardamax for personal use. But I didn't feel like he was lying when he was talking to us about the Mecha. I also don't think he'd be able to keep that kind of tampering under wraps. Yeah, had he actually tampered with the Mecha, we'd be able to prove it with a simple check of the guard's inventory. If the mecha were taken from the guards, it should be yeah. easy to find out when and how that happened. Maybe it was someone else. Okay. Uncle Marcel? Uh, hmm. My father did really trust him. And they worked together on a large number of projects. Maybe that's how he got to know Jacques. And with funds from the Confrérie, yeah. we also afford a large number See? of projects. 
See? The man is so really hard for me to imagine though. After all, Uncle Marcel has been around since I was just I think a child. he's withholding information from us. Also, wouldn't this mean he has been spending a whole lot of mora and energy to fight his own synth business? Maybe it was someone else. Okay, maybe I could be wrong all this time. <laughs> It is true that he was I'm still leaning to towards father, Marcel, though. And thus had the best chance of learning about his dealings with Shock. But as Spina Dino's advisor, his work mostly deals with personnel and security, so he shouldn't have much means when it comes to finances. So you're saying he's too broke to afford a mecha army? Exactly, he can't. And even if he could, I don't think he would be able mm. to dispatch a whole group so quickly. <sighs> Who could it be? I think... Oh, it's thinking time. Choose... Okay. Alright, here we go. Choose the... Which, which of the three suspects was most likely to have committed the crime? Okay. We're gonna... Check out some stuff. Relevant, relevant. Oh... Oh... Okay, okay. So we're gonna double check this one by one then. Yeah, because I, I do find it sus that during our whole conversation with Marcel, he just keep he just keeps on bringing up um stuff like um if you ever need help, I will I will send money to <laughs> I will give you money. I will give you money to clear clear your father's thing. You know, if you think everything through Uncle Marcel is indeed the most suspicious of them all. Could we be missing other suspects? Malus didn't know about the people turning into water thing when he narrowed it down to these three, did he? <sighs> Malus has always been very reliable, and his judgment of others' trustworthiness has been fair and well considered. When he laid out his case for the three, the rationale he gave me made a lot of sense as well. Unless... Me? Wait. We do know that um, during our talk with the Oceanid earlier, so the Oceanid was actually human at first, right? And she mentioned that um, her memories got her memories got blurry over time, something like that. So, oh shoot! What if um, what if, what if um, um, what was his name again? What if what if the third man that we talked to earlier? What if? What if he lost his memories about his? What if his memories about the incident? Maybe they came, maybe they became blurry, not because of old age specifically, but maybe because he dis he dissolved into water. Would that be? Uh, would that the be an effect? Is knowledgeable about Side the effect. internal affairs, has the means to dispatch Mecca to assassinate us, and possesses significant intellect and foresight. <sighs> Even if I don't want to believe it, I'm starting to see how things could all tie back to Uncle Marcel. But yeah, on, but maybe maybe he could also be using his his blurry memory as an excuse to with <laughs> to withhold information. Okay. Anyways, he is someone who's very close to you after all. Well, we still have another trump card on top of all the theorizing and speculating. The synth production base. Yes. Malus did say that charging straight in there would be extremely risky. But we don't have any other options right now. We need far more solid proof before we can hope to go charging in on our enemy. Navia, here you are. Oh, oh. I've been looking for you. You're back. Huh? Aren't you the guy from the guards? Did something happen? Yeah. News came from Arenaeus just after you left. We've got another trial on our hands. Wasn't that place built specifically for holding trials? <laughs> What's so newsworthy about this one? I know, I know. But they said the person they're putting on oh! trial is a Fatui Harbinger called Tartaglia. Wait, child? What? Is that someone you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we know him. Maybe even a little too well. Well... He's been accused of being the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. It's absurd, don't you think? Wait, how? 
None of our investigations have had anything to do with him. Maybe this is just a distraction. That's what I thought was strange about it. So I came well, to actually, tell you the news right away. I I actually kind of feel about I kind of feel bad about Chad. Okay, not with Liwe though. I think he, <laughs> I think for the Liwe act, he kind of he kind of um it was it was kind of all right for him to be kept in the dark um about um Jong Lee's and um the Saritsa's contract when it comes to the noses. And okay, yeah, now that I think about it, um did you if we recall during the Liwe Arc conquest, notice how Jong Lee used I think he used a lot of um a lot of stage terms while he was talking to Signora. Like um he um that like um he actually he actually compared the test he the test he um gave to Liwe as um some kind of um some kind of play. Yeah, actually I wanna double check the Archon Quest dialogues uh, later, maybe for a bit. Th just so that we can see the those said lines. So yeah. And if the charge against him stands, then it'll be next to impossible to get the guards to support any of our planned investigations. Right. Because they'll think they've already found the culprit. Yeah. And it'll be a lot harder than to clear Mr. Callus's name. Hmm. I understand. <sighs> well, partner, what do you think we should do? We still haven't found any conclusive evidence. Let's split up. Huh? Split up? What do you mean? You can't go to Arrhenius while well, I'll go investigate that place. <laughs> Just as expected of my partner. Since this is a trial about the serial disappearances case, the culprit's attention will be yeah. focused on Arrhenius, leaving his home base wide open. You're right. This is our best opportunity. <laughs> All right then, let's do this. I'll stall them at the Opera House and charge Marcel as the true culprit. I won't have any chance of making that charge stick, though, unless we find more evidence. It'll be up to you to make it back in time and hand the decisive evidence to me. Leave it to me. We'll help you, just like you helped us in Lenny's trial. Demoiselle, please allow us to accompany you. I'm ready. Ah, oh, <laughs> Malou, Silver. When did you two get here? We heard that you'll be leaving Poisson and figured that you might require our assistance. It's our hope that your confidence will be bolstered with the two of us by your side. You know, I didn't expect that I'm going to be attached to Spina de Rosuda, but... <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I'm liking them more then and more. <laughs> Paimon, Traveler, I'll see you at the Opera House. See you then! Okay, suspect analysis. Combining the information regarding the guard mechs and the investigation results so far, it can be concluded that there is only one person who can have a large number of guard mechs in his possession and run the synth business without leaving traces. This person is none other than Marcel. I'm so glad we're correct. Yes. Yes. Now that Navia has set out for Aranias, we should also get going. The location has already been marked on the map, so let's head over. Oh, this is near a waypoint. Ooh. Okay. Before we proceed, let me check out some art conquest dialogues first. Yeah, I will show you the. Oh. We have new recipes. <laughs> what? Okay. All right. That's always welcome. Even. Okay. Actually, let me go clean. All right. Anyways, back to the archive. Let's let's check out the the other archon quest. Travelog. It should be somewhere here. Okay. For Zhongli at Northland Bank. Okay.
Okay, I'm trying to see a certain line here. Okay, this one, this one. I will just read this instead of playing the voice lines. Just to be quicker. Okay. Um, as you know, I've dealt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Liyue together with the Adepti. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form and that the end of my time had not yet come. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard the merchant tell one of his workers, You've finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless above I stood motionless among the crowds asking myself have I already finished my duties but as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart was Liyue, the city I had the, the city I had dwelt in for so long already prepared to enter its next age I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer so I feigned my own death and gathered the cast of child, the adepti, and the liwa chasing to play their roles together on the stage. That was Liwe. This one is a really interesting quote now that I think about it. And then the traveler asked, So were you satisfied with the finale? Zhongli said, Indeed I was. The gnosis which I had kept for so many years suddenly seemed to have lost its meaning. So yeah, and then um Okay. I I think I, there's some more stuff here. Oh yeah, I think um I think Jongi said something about um he actually did not expect that that the Adepti and the Jising will cooperate in the in the fight against Os Osile. Okay, and then Where's the part about child being pissed off by this? <laughs> this one, this one. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You practically kept me in the dark. Then Senora said, Hey, I think that things would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance. If anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Argon, Liyue, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of, of a city. So yeah, basically, um, uh, the Fatui, the, the Fatui, um, purposely withheld some information from Child for the Liyue mission. It's kind of like um he was they made him they made him in charge of creating chaos in Liyue even though he wasn't aware that he was being used. So so with that in mind, I I am kind of wondering if the Fatui are trying to use child again as some form of distraction now that um now that we're actually we're actually going to have um a trial right now for a child and oh, i feel so bad now that i think about it oh my god i hope he's not being used again okay all right we're gonna we're gonna proceed now to the next part of the quest i think this should be a domain already 